slap shots. The bone jarring hits. Phenomenal saves. And don't forget the ice. Smooth as ice. Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light, the official beer sponsors of the NHL. So hockey's back. What else could you want? Need a better way to get through the winter? Try a Dodge Caravan. With front-wheel drive traction and automatic transmission, this caravan takes ice and snow in stride while taking it easy on your budget. With $500 cash back on select models and up to $1,000 in discounts from package value. Dodge Caravan. With all this, plus standard dual airbags, it's the best way to get over the river and through the woods to grandma's or anywhere else. America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. Mini One-on-One -on -one with Bob Norton and Ron DiGregorio. Brought to you by your Eastern Massachusetts and Southern New Hampshire Midas dealers. Tonight's contest is a quarterfinal matchup in the Pee Wee Division as the Flyers from Franklin meet Plymouth. Now, from Matthews Arena on the campus of Northeastern, here's Ron and Bob. Many one-on-one Pee Wee competition. Franklin on the right, Plymouth on the left. Brought to you by Midas. Plymouth trying to penetrate into the Franklin zone, but Franklin clears the puck out on the right, right. Right side, Brian Doherty, 27, snaps the shot off. Jennifer Huggin makes the save. Franklin has it behind the goal line. Panero tries to clear it up front, but Plymouth's going to get it. Racing the puck, they win it. Number nine, Steve Huggins snaps off a shot on Gino Richards, the goaltender for Franklin. Richards deflects it to the left corner. Pressed there by Jason Kostanovitz for Plymouth, but Franklin controls the puck. They come out broken up there by... Number nine, Steve Huggin, picked up there by Franklin's Chris Sherlock. Sherlock moves it across the right side, goes to set his own Jason Kostanovitz. Knocks it just outside the blue line where Franklin picks it up. Franklin through center zone, broken up in the middle of the ice. Puck cleared by Plymouth. Plymouth is Chris Sherlock. Deflects the puck to his left, not quite out of the zone. Brian Darty has it. Darty works back toward his goal. Now gets the puck outside his blue line, picked up by Graham Smith for Plymouth. Smith on the left side, moves it to Anthony Tarmina. Tarmina gets it over to number nine, Steve Huggin. Steve Huggin down the left side. Steve Huggin toward the middle. Deflected Ooh. out in front by Gino Richards, who deflected that centering pass away. They had a great opportunity. Did Plymouth as number six for Plymouth. Anthony Taramina worked to the front of the net, was going to try to deflect that centering pass, but Gino Richards with the save. Plymouth did a great job working that puck in for that opportunity. First opportunity, really. Franklin loses his face off, snapped off. Gino Richards with the save on a Taramina shot. Franklin trying to control the puck behind the goal line, picked up there by Steve Huggin. Steve Huggin works it out, but it's intercepted by Franklin. Franklin carries the puck through center zone. Brian Darty down the right. Brian darty has got to walk in. Brian Darty shoots, score! That was a great pass by uh, Peter Travato to Brian Darty. Brian Darty takes the puck at center ice, beats the defense, and beats the goaltender, Jennifer Huggin. Here it is, a great pass, a great cut inside, keeps control, hit up and takes that snapper right in that far post. 42 seconds remain, and Franklin has a one to nothing lead over Plymouth. Plymouth's number six, Anthony Taramina, on the faceoff at center ice, but the puck's controlled by Peter Travato of Franklin. Puck goes back and forth in the middle of the ice, picked up by Michael Huggin. Michael Huggin, Jason Kostanovitz. Jason Kostanovitz on the right side loses it. Puck deflected up by Franklin. Franklin, Plymouth has a goaltender pull. They have four men on the ice. Franklin has the puck in the zone, though, but here comes Plymouth, two on one chance. Plymouth has the puck on the left side. Can't make that connecting pass as it was controlled by Anthony Taramini. Just couldn't connect in the pass on the right side to Stephen Huggin. Time running out, four seconds remaining. Plymouth knocks it in the zone. And that's it. Franklin uh, gets that important goal to advance. Final score here, Franklin one, Plymouth nothing. Remember that first crush? Ain't nobody crying. Remember what you did about it? Ain't nobody worried. No. Well, now's your chance. 
to see your friends make the same mistakes. Again, Beverly Hills 90210. Weeknights at 6 on TV 38. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over 2 million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Our New England Fort scoring summary, no scoring in the first period, and then the Flyers got on the board first. Dave Brown had a puck deflect off his body and pa passed Blaine Locker at 154 to give the Flyers the lead. And then the Bruins tied it up just past the midway point of the period on the power play, Cam Neely from Adam Oates and Ray Bork. So 1-1 the score after two, and we're very, very happy to... For that, we're very, very happy uh, that we're able to start, and I'd much, much sooner uh, be hearing from Raymond Bork and Patrick Waugh than I will from Bob Goodnow and Barry <laughs> Bettman. Well, I think sentiments uh, Harry Sinden expressed probably apply to the rest of the league as well. Kevin Paul DuPont, as we go around the NHL here on our second intermission. Kevin, any, uh, any lasting damage to the game that you can see from the last three and a half months? Well, of course, only time will tell here, Doug, but I, but I think here in the United States, I don't think there's going to be much of an effect, really. People have been so accustomed to labor problems here, baseball on another strike as opposed to a lockout. But I think in Canada, I think they've got real, real wounds to heal there. I think if you notice the attendance throughout the U.S. here over the weekend has been good. Up in Canada, specifically Winnipeg, Vancouver, I was surprised last night. Uh, well under capacity, so they take it more as an insult to, I think, to their heritage and to their game up there. Do you think most of the fans, though, are, are maybe forgiving because they have that sense that the general consensus is that the players really didn't win much by being out on uh, during the lockout? There's some of that. I think a lot of people feel that the players got clobbered here in the collective bargaining, uh, and if they're going to, if they're going to put their sentiment somewhere, it's just the fact that the game's back on rather than get into management's a lot harder to, a lot harder to hate in a sense because they don't see the management they see the players and I think they're especially here in Boston they're glad that it's just up and running and I think that's a product too of the Red Sox not playing well had the season started on time we still would have had you do predictions so now your predictions come three and a half months later but the interesting thing is as we take a look at them now Kevin uh, ran through the predictions for each division and you kept them the same in spite of the shortened season fearless in September fearless <laughs> here in January I guess the two here in the, in the northeast or in the east, I like Quebec because they've they've had been so loaded with good forwards for so long. Finally, I think they've they've fixed their goaltending. They bring in Forsberg, terrific team, top to bottom, great great talent. New Jersey, their last year, all but for a stuff shot by Stefan Matteau, would have been in the finals. Solid. Uh, they keep Scott Stevens. They almost lose him as a free agent, but again, great big solid talent. Other side, Toronto. I, I, I like Toronto. I don't like them nearly as much as Vancouver. The Leafs have uh, helped themselves a lot, I think, with Sundin, but I, I liked Wendell Clark's character. I think that puts them down a notch, but still, because of Gilmore and their forwards, good talent there. Vancouver last night, if you, if you compared this to what happened to them last <laughs> night with, <laughs> against St. Louis, they looked weak. But again, uh, Pavel Bure, uh, Kirk McLean and Nett, a solid team, should be there again, I think. And in the end, New Jersey wins because, because of the size. If, if Vancouver could come up with the type of grit that New Jersey has established here, four lines keep rolling out, never to be intimidated, I think it could have been different. But in the end, I like Jersey. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. We'll be talking to you throughout the season. Thanks, Doug. Take it to Caesars. All right. <laughs> Kevin Paul DuPont of the Boston Globe around the NHL, our first edition of the season. 1-1 one, one after two here at the Garden. Back upstairs to Fred and Derek. Thank you, Doug. 1-1 one, one the score. Philadelphia being outshot by the Bruins 21 to 14 Bruins on the tied it up on the strength of that power play one out of five Philadelphia now 0 for 11 on the season they were 0 for 7 against Quebec in their first game the Bruins still struggling in that faceoff department but the effort is there the emotion is there the both both teams are playing a good physical hockey game they're taking the body as Fred mentioned in the first two periods I wondered because Philadelphia played yesterday, will it take a toll on them in the third period? Well, we're, uh, we are about to see if it will. 
Kevin Denine in the box. And the Bruins are still on the power play. And the Bruins have 150 left on that uh, power play. They are one for five. Philadelphia 0 for four on power plays. Significant part of those shots, the Bruins had 11 in that second period. Most of them coming in the second half of it. Yes, they, they, Philadelphia really did control the first first part of that second period. And it's off to Raymond Bork, Donato, and in the zone. Bouncing wildly. Intercepted here by DeMaio, ex-Islander. I've always liked Rob DeMaio. I thought he was a great player, great skills, good checker. His size has been a detriment, but I, he's, he's got a big heart. He's nearly cutting inside. Can't get control. Zetlin knocked it away. Tchaikovsky rolls it back. Donato quickly for Tchaikovsky again. He's able to get it in for Neely. For Donato. Back at the line. High shot. Rolls deflected wide. Zettler can't clear it out. Now he does just outside. Donato brought it back in. Trying to make a pass. And the play is called. Teddy Donato getting the early slot on that left point. It will take a power play quite a bit of time to get used to somebody back there. Uh, any change in a power play it kind of throws your timing off. You get a feel for each other when the power play goes out a lot together and it's the same one all the time. So Donato getting the early call there. And right now it's Casitano. Bork a flip in and the Bruins are offside. 53 seconds left on their power play. Just underway in the third period. One to one the score. Getting back to that left point in the power play, one of the great power plays the Bruins had in the old days was Freddie Stanfield was there. He just knew what everybody else was going to do, and that's what the Bruins need to find to help Ray Bork out on back there. Casatana puts it in. Oates. Back around. And to go for it. Ray Bork intercepts at the line. Able to keep it in. Casatana. Bork behind the back. Oates. Back around. Oates. The shot is wide as Oates cut in. Long one by Bork. Knocked away. And out of the zone on a diving play by Kevin Hollow. Ex-Montreal, ex-Buffalo defenseman. Bruins come back. Neely trying to flip it across. It's thrown out of the zone by Brindamore. He just grabbed it. And the Bruins stymied on this power play. Donato comes away. He's playing forward. Gets it in for Leach. It hopped over his stick. He would have been in alone on that one. On the pass, a steal by Oates, who's still out there. Oates, Donato, cuts in front, trying to get it away. Blocked by Galley, who went down. Fed back, right point. And Shaw able to keep it in with Leach. Leach, screenshot. And never got through. Galley knocked it away for Deneen. Full strength, Philadelphia. Deneen, long shot on Blaine Locker. And the teams change up. Leach, Spolensky took the hit. And it's over the line for Hughes. Hughes, Bling, trying to get it in front on the fly to Leach. Doesn't work. Spolensky goes in, get it. Puts it in front. Rolls away back to the point. Kept in by Shaw. Indeed for Hughes. Hughes trying to put it in front. Can't do it. And McGill. Able to knock it out. Spolensky coming back. Bruins are carrying the play. It started with the power play. Not, not an effective one, but they kept it in the Philadelphia half of the ice. And now it is Prendemore trying to go to center ice, and he's stopped on the play. Stumple trying to get it. Can't. Uline. Pass up. Covered by Ray Bork. Bork for Murray. Murray hit by Terrian. Terrian's hit a lot. Able to clear it out, and... Ray Bork whips it back in. Here's Brindamore. Always a threat. Off for Lindros. For Yulene. The pass in front. Goes to the boards. Stumple coming back for Boston. Over for Sweeney. In deep. Sweeney in front. Quick shot. Tough angle by Stumple. He was alone just outside the crease. But the angle was tough. And his shot went wide. Lindros coming back. Malone checked by Bork and broken up. Bork trying to move it out. It 
blocked and goes back in deep for Don Sweeney. After him is Fedek. And away on the right comes Popan. Popan up the middle for Donato. Doesn't work. Could be offside. It is. There's the call. It is one to one. Boston and Philadelphia. Third period on TV 38. to Dunkin' Donuts. Now when you buy a dozen Dunkin' Donuts, you'll get a real lift. Every box comes with a proof of purchase worth a lot of money on these slopes. After this, it's all downhill. Here's a little refresher course in case you forgot. This is a puck. This is the net. This is a Zamboni. These are hits. These are saves. Goals. And this, well, this is the ice. Smooth as ice. Bud Ice and Bud Ice White, the official beer sponsors of the NHL. Get a look here at Joseph Stumpel, very good hockey player, very underrated. It's a play from Sweeney, just misses the net. I think he was looking to give it back to him. Kevin Haller trying to come out. Stopped by Lacroix. And finally, the breakout by Renberg. Big, solid winger, Renberg. Superb rookie season. Loose puck by Potvin. Around for Lacroix. Lacroix, Potvin. Up for Donato. Shot goes wide. And players try to come out. Terrian knocked down Donato. Moranek. On the right wing side, using his size, goes in deep, but Potvin is back. Gets it up for Donato. Donato up the middle for Shaw. Long shot. Missed on Rossell. At center ice, Shaw on it again. Snaps it in on the right wing boards, and Terrian able to take it. This one goes all the way to the Boston end. Casatano back. No icing. Bodine after air for able to keep it in for McTavish ready for a blocker. Deflected it into the stands as McTavish gets the shot. 4 14 40 left here. Third period. 1 well, 1. As you mentioned, and predicted so eloquently and astutely. The play has dropped off somewhat, and I think it's a lot of, a lot of it has to do with the play of the Flyers. I think they're a little more tired than the Bruins. You get a look at Mark Buckman. 440 penalty minutes in his four-year career. For the Bruins, Cam Neely, who has scored their goal on a power play. Can't move it out. Benin on the boards. Benin puts it in front of Galley. is wiped out by Tchaikovsky before he can get that pass. Freight train hit him. Tchaikovsky is intercepted by Benin at center ice. Deneen trying to go it alone, stopped by Casatano. Out to center, Zettler lost it, Oates with it. Oates set up the Neely goal, over the line, leaves it there for Casatano. Casatano shot, blocked, able to keep it in. Tchaikovsky of Philadelphia just gathering in front of the goaltender here, circling the wagon. And the Bruins able to keep it in, Oates Kind of set the play, can't do it. Adam Oates is such a complete hockey player. He's very, very good with handling the puck and controlling it, looking to dish it off, make plays. Devastating. He can, he can just bury you alone. Well, our replay official is uh, Chuck Naboli. I hope I Naboli. pronounced that right. Naboli. Naboli. N A B O L I. And what a key factor he's been in this game. Take a look at Adam Oates, a gifted player. Led the league the last three seasons total in points. Here he slides, takes it with his feet, he takes the check, he gets pumped, gets up, gets back in the play. Able to keep it in is Don Sweeney at the left point. The drive deep, Mackala played well, looks good. And able to sweep one in from the short side, and Roussel makes the save. It's back again for Ray Bork. Shot to save Roussel. 
and with it, our drive Spolinski blocked. Out again, Spolinski for Bork. Bork trying to get it through the screen, and I tell you, the Flyers are just circling in front of Roussel. The, the Bruins hold off the Bruins and a, they're blocking shots. That's a very good point, Fred. But the Bruins have got to be aware of. They cannot get out of position trying to score. Flyers can burn them with a quick breakout. Here comes Yulene over the line. The pass is stopped by Ray Bork. Bork on the move to Smolenski. Smolenski to the trailer. Don Sweeney fakes, cuts in, in front, blocked by Roussel as he cut right by the defense and in on Roussel. That was Don Sweeney. Great recovery by Yaskevich. I seen here. One one the score back in the moment on TV 38. They don't call Vegas the city of sin for nothing. There is nothing. The box bolted, not welded to the frame. It's strong and solid. Something for the ages, you might say. Lease the 95 F-150 with driver's side airbag for just $218 a month. Your New England Ford dealer. No wonder we've got five of the ten best-selling vehicles in America. Here the Flyers just kind of standing around in desperation. Nobody covering the points, but just holding on at this juncture. Play on. 12.30 left, third period. One to one the score. Settler kept in deep by Stumple. Galley hit by Stumple. Boston can't contain it. Brindamore knocks it away. Ooh, a penalty on Settler. Good call, Marowelli. He boarded uh, Murray at center ice. The Bruins will go on a power play. Moranek trying to incite David Shaw as the Bruins are carrying the play and. It's been this way now for 18 minutes, about halfway through the second period. Joseph Stumple also took a wicked elbow or punch in the mouth by Gary Galley. But I tell you, Bruins keeping their composure. There's Murray. He hasn't got to the puck yet. He cannot be hit until he touches it. Zettler in his enthusiasm to take his man out. Nails Glenn Murray. Seventh Bruins power play. They're one for six. Number 20, Rob Settler. Two minutes for interference. But Roussel has Seven done a superb job. 53 seconds. Cam Neely getting ready. He has a the only Boston goal on a power play set Seven up by Oates and Ford. Brown scored for Philadelphia. Myers, Cam Rob Neely got Settler. double coverage out there again in the power play. A winger and a defenseman noticing wherever he is or wherever he goes. And he draws that attention and he's used to that. Neely and McTavish, won by McTavish. Jiskovic out of the zone. And McTavish with it. Going deep, watched by Oates. Bork starts it. McTavish, superb penalty killer. Out of the Rangers Stanley Cup championship. Of course, all those years with Edmund. Holler in deep, takes a hit from Neely. Tchaikovsky with it. Behind the net, Oates. Bork missed the net. Well, that's the story of uh, this being the first game of the season. Then the story for many a team. Back for Bork again. Shot blocked. Score! Jammed in by Neely. Cam Neely on the rebound of the Ray Bork shot. And it's two to one, Boston. As we said, Cam Neely double covered. Doesn't matter. Has tremendous ability to get a stick on the puck. He is a force to be dealt with out there. He is healthy. I watched him in the, the week camp that they had and just was, it was overpowering on many occasions. But he has an ability to get free. Right here, Wade shoves it through the feet. Thank you very much for my second goal of the game, second of the season. Ray Bork gets another assist. See, everybody comes to him late. Haller late, Yaskevich late. Everybody tries to beat Neely to the puck. Don't Boston play Cam Neely. You're going to get burned. You've got to take the body. You cannot play the puck on him. He is very strong. He's got great hands and a great feel for moving it into open spaces. So, to nobody's surprise, the assists go to Bork and Oates. No, that's pretty well. We're going to see that a lot this year because the Bruins they need their depth to start clicking in. 
Over the line, Spolinski holds, goes deep. Trying to put it in front, they made a magnificent play, and Rossell was just able to tie it up as he faked the defense, but then ran out of skating room. Brian Malinsky up the middle. That is a great individual effort by Smolinski. He has those skills. We've seen them many times before. Right here, down goes Zettler. Uh-oh, then he starts crawling around. But see, Brian can't get back to the front of the net. And what he tries to do is make a play. Excellent move by Dominic Roussel to keep him out of the front of the net with the pass. Now, if Smolinski had gone wide, he would have had himself a chance. But Gary Galley was waiting for him to do so, so Brian opted for the short side. The Bruins lead two to one. Both their goals power plays, both by Cam Neely, and the assists in both goals to Bork and to Oates. And Dave Brown from Fedek at 154 of the second period for an early Philadelphia lead. We have 11 10 left in the third period. Philadelphia has had two shots in the last 30 minutes, about 19 minutes. Oh, no, no, in the other period as well. The two power plays went for not. No shots on those, so. Ray Bork keeps it in. Shot misses from the blue line. Galley chops it out, and Lindros is there. Brindamore got it, but Lindros was offside as he had moved in and had lost his stick somewhere along the line. I like that play right there by Don Sweeney. He's very fleet of foot. He was not going to let Rod Brindamore get to the net without him. Whistle or no whistle, it appeared that Brindamore was continuing to play, so Sweeney decided he'd continue to skate with him. You never know whether the whistle is in the crowd or not. And on many occasions that happens, especially in the first night. Some joker brings an extra whistle, but Donnie Sweeney said, oh, no, we'll just take you all the way to the net, make sure. Puck into the Boston end around the boards, kept in by Terry. Now Gruden going for it. Up for Smolinski, but not out. Brindamore moving it in. Gruden takes over. Rookie trying to come up the boards. Able to fire it down, and it is not icing. Carrion winding up. And away in the center rise to Brindaborn. Brindaborn with Baranek. So Terry Murray has changed his lines behind the net. They got a bit mixed up. Locker had moved out. And way up is Galley, checked by Leach on the boards. It goes behind the net to Casatano. And the Bruins work it out to wow. Smolenski. He can't get control. Quick Spol changes, and back comes Baranek. Shot. Beautiful save. Locker. Baranek on the left wing. Screamed it to the bar corner. Baranek. Great glove save. Locker reaching out. A beautiful save. Locker exhibiting a great catching glove. This is low, hard on the money. Misses it with his leg, but he's got the hand backing up the pad. Thank you very much. Well, they're starting with the locker already. They're going to love him here. Uh, if he continues to play like this, he certainly will become a, a Boston favorite real quick. Draw one against Lindros by the Bruins. Lindros out there at center. A presence for sure. In this big team, Fedek is checked by Ray Bork. Loose puck to Haller. Haller over the line for Lindros. Pass in. Tip. Goes wide. Yulene cutting right in front on the backhander by Lindros. He's got all the moves. Here comes Neely back. He has two goals. He's going against Fedek. Goes behind the net. Is taken down. They both go down. And it's off for Oates. Oates back in front. He knows Neely would be there. And the pass slipped between his legs and went wide. Nearly being covered by Holler. That may Again, nearly. Back comes Oates over the line. Behind the back. Nearly. Nearly is shot. Didn't get good wood on it. Blocked. Roussel able to tie it up. And Nearly taken down on the play by Fedek. Puck came on the dish from Oates. The puck is slice spinning a little bit. Oates cut the puck. So what happened, Neely never really got it in the shooting area. He got it in his feet and in front of him. So he opted to do a little kind of a wrist shot, hoping for a rebound of some sort. I'm a little angry at Kevin Holler. There it is. See, it comes off the heel spinning. Can't really get any wood on it. 
And Fred, that is Fedek. And that's how you take Neely in front of the net. Fedek just says, we're both going to the ice. Can get hit in the throat and the stick earlier in the shift. Recovered from that. 9-14 left in the third period. Boston leads 2-1. to one. Stumple. Off the corner, kicks a pass in front. Doesn't connect, but Murray is able to keep it in now. Looking for Hughes. Doesn't work. Stumple on it. Can't set up Murray. In the corner goes Hughes. Murray. Back for Stumple. Can't put it on net. It is Hughes on the other side. And then he can't center it. Cleared away by Podine. And good back checking by Murray. Stopped the play. Up for Stumple. Pass. Block. Galley. McTavish. Played in the zone. Hughes tried to line up McTavish. It has been a very aggressive first game of the season. Second for Philadelphia. First for Boston. Hughes back. Over the line. Stumple. Stumple holding. Shooting. Blocked. A lot of Bruin shots have been blocked in front of Roussel. Right back comes Donato to keep it in. With Pop Van. Rolls it near the net. In the corner. Behind the net. Pop Van going for it. A grab there. Watch out for holding. And the breakout by Rod Brindaboy, one of the fine players in the National Hockey League. He's stopped by Gruden, the puck taken over by Casatana. Two to one, the Bruins. Period number three. This one bounces in off Lacroix. Brindamore taken down. 7.49 left, third period. Casatana. In the center ice for Croix. Over the line. Puck and breaking in. Shot save, Roussel. The shot making not at its best in no. this, the first game. That's been the pattern. The Bruins keep it in. Roll it in front of The Bruins score. It is Lacroix tipping it home to make it 3-1 to one for Boston. Daniel Lacroix in his first game in the National Hockey League. Four years in the minors himself an opportunity he gets one for the Bruins to make it three to one he had 21 goals his best year with Binghamton that spent four years in Binghamton Ryan Sutter these guys nice little drag touch pass there by Potvan shot from the point and Lacroix fights for that spot in front of the net and gets an easy one in the Bruins scheme of things this would be the fourth line All right this is John Gruden feeds it in I believe the fourth line has been used steadily by Brian Sutter, which can be a factor. For sure. Bruins come back. Smolenski trying to put it in front. Justin goal scored by number the 40, Daniel Lacroix. Lacroix, the score. Assisted. Three to one Boston. It's away for Fedek. He can't get it, but Lindros does. A one-hand pass across. Broken up. Time of the goal, 12 minutes, 32 seconds. Lacroix. Bruins goal scored Gruden. by Danielle Lacroix. Donato. Assisted by Mark Buckman. And we have a face-off call. It is three to one Boston. Third period on TV 38. Mom. I think this should be a snow day. Oh, driving's no problem. When you gotta go in the snow, the Mercury Villager's ready with the traction of front-wheel drive and the security of standard anti-lock brakes. You won't get stuck with high monthly payments either. Just $2.79 a month for a 24-month lease for the only minivan that changes faster than the weather. This just in. School has been canceled. I sure feel sorry for those kids in Florida. How come? They never get a snow day. See Villager at your New England Lincoln Mercury dealer and let us prove it. There is life after finding out you're HIV positive. As case managers, we feel it's just as important to teach family members and significant others about HIV and AIDS as it is the person with AIDS. Eventually, they may be the primary caregivers. It's not really dying of AIDS, it's, it's living the best quality of life possible. Daniel Lacroix for Glenn Featherstone, acquired from the New York Rangers in the offseason. As we mentioned before, this is his rookie year in the National Hockey League. He's been a pro for a few years now, but 
That is so nice to get that first goal in your first NHL game, get it out of the way. He had four years at uh, Binghamton and was picked up because of his aggressiveness. Ray Bork with it. Over the line, Sweeney. Back. Hitting the post, Tchaikovsky. Set up by Sweeney. Here's a bit for a hat trick by Neely, and it's stopped by Roussel. Renberg trying to move it out, can't do it. Ruskevich comes back. The flip in. Ray Bork popped it over the head of Lindros, but it's kept in now by Philadelphia, and Bork tries the other way. Tchaikovsky now to Oates. Oates coming on Ruskevich. He's broken up. Bruins control Shaw driving in. 5.45 left here in the third period. Stumple on quick changes by Brian Sutter, but he is using all four lines. The Bruins have a big one with the Rangers tomorrow night in New York. There's a shot by Murray. It's blocked around the other side. Renberg starts it away for the big man. Lindros shot. Oh, a wrist shot that missed the net. And did that ever go? It must have been 110 miles an hour. Hodine keeps it in. Screenshot on Locker. The Bruins break it up and clear it out. Huskoff's hurt. A slashing call here. Oh, that Lindros. Is he ever something? We've seen a backhand shot going a mile a minute. Well, he unloaded that backhander, didn't he? The wrist shot was very impressive. Here's Eric Lindros. By the net, by the camera. Cam Pickett is coming off the backboards, and that's a wrist shot. What a weapon that is to have. Oh, he said, uh, if I were his coach, I'd have him shooting more often. At the replay, uh, man is important in this one. Uh, two out of three on the referee were overruled. Time of the penalty, 14 minutes, 55 seconds.